Percentages. I just know that I have a lot of random weird poor people in my history. Oh, okay. How far back is <laughs> really Oh, is. I'm, I'm not like sure. Definitely. Could you go back like a thousand years? Oh. No, I don't know. I didn't go back that far. I got really bored. I was like, all right, I don't know anybody now. <laughs> a whole bunch of different flavors of wine. Yeah. Daniel <laughs> Boone, <laughs> because that's not. Are you really? That's really Why cool. am I not surprised? Wait, who's, 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 <laughs> what? What? Oh, I don't know what Daniel Boone means. What? I don't even know what Daniel Boone means. It's definitely an American movie. I come on. Let's go. I'm down. That's awesome. What if there's Johnny Appleseed? Johnny Appleseed. No, no, no. Cool. Yeah, so my grandmother, she's really into the Ancestry.com stuff. So she knows like the percentages of you from you know Swedish and whatever else. It's funny, I guess I'm pretty high percentage Swedish and then quite a bit English, which she's no she's no way to yeah, that so doesn't work. Swedish, no not way. actually Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> we have a national straight. You guys, need to, you guys need to take the borders down. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, don't down. Down. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. 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 yeah, if my grandpa actually knew he was Swedish, he might have not even come to the wedding. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, my really? grandpa, my grandparents are one, they're Norwegian. Oh, so, it's so it's kind of a big deal to them. I just didn't realize that. Until now. Well, the Swedes tried to kill us like well, I, know. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. They don't really trust people that are Swedes. Norton is Norwegian before they run the fight harder. Honestly. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, make tea, not war. <laughs> <laughs> widespread polygamy. They, they, were, they, they, were, they, were, they had to make sure that they weren't inter intermarrying and interbreeding. That's funny. Well, I think it was that and yes. the fact too that they Mormons in their religion you could save different people in your family by mm -hmm. doing religious works. So they would go back so far and save all their family members because they weren't sure if they were Mormon. So I don't really condone paying but kind of this is cool you're able to get on there and go back hundreds of years ago so why are like super detailed genealogies like this why were they so important back then so back in um, biblical times back in um, the, back in when the jews were inhabiting israel and stuff why were they so important because they hadn't invented sleep Age yet. <laughs> <laughs> right down the yeah. <laughs> We know, like, back then, particularly family ties, particular, like, group identity 
it's very important, which is so weird to us, like, like in modern day in, in the West, like, especially in America, we're very much about the individual and just thinking, am I part, you, you needed to know what group you're a part of. And especially with God's promises to Israel, like that was group specific and he included people outside of that group, but it was, you know, towards the group. So knowing which group you were a part of was really, really important. Yeah. Your full time gave you authority. Yeah. And gave you position in some cases too. Definitely for like kings and rulers, it was really important. Priests for all of that. that. Mm -hmm. That's true. The priests and the high priests and everything having to be able to track that. Yeah, so being able to track who was the, the rightful heir for the, you know, the, who was the rightful next in line, it was, it was very important for sure. And like you've been saying, sure all the tribes and stuff were uh, they're keeping track of that so it's very interesting um so we see them tracking from adam and then all the way through to the last king of israel right? so why is this detailed genealogy like what makes this so important important to us now so like application wise okay. so now it is I think it's pretty amazing to see like prophecy basically like that God predicted that Jesus would come from um you know David and all that and to see all that happen and how it did happen, just the people that he used and stuff, that you were like, you know, even you know, Abraham and you know, he didn't have any kids, and God's like, You're gonna be, you know, the father of thousands. And he's like, Okay, whatever. And then he was, and you could see it all, and you could track it all. I mean, practically to me, it's like, you know, God's plans are way higher than our plans and way more, you know, detailed and com complex than we'll ever even know. So God made promises to some very key players in the Bible. So Sarah mentioned two of them. So Abraham and David. Who else did he make a promise to? The Jesus and Messiah would come. Specific individual kind of promise in general. Hmm? <laughs> that was a surprise for me. <laughs> No, so any ideas? Wait, you said other than David? Yeah, other than David and Abraham. Yeah. Who's the other? And Isaac and Jacob. You kind of lump all those together. You know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as well. You know, uh, same very close family right there. Um, there's one other individual. Actually, there's two people that he made the promise. It's Adam and Eve. So at the beginning, he said, um, you know, I'll put any enmity. And really, it was a he was it was God declaring it to the serpent to say, man, I'll put enmity between um, your seed and her seed. Right? And he will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. And so it was the serpent, his head was going to be crushed. Right? And that was a promise that was made. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. And so, and it was very key because um, you look at, he said, between your seed and her seed, right? And that word seed um, typically was not used when you're talking about uh, the about a female, right? That's always used in, uh, when you're talking about the male reproductive uh, system. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting. So that even is foreshadowing and being born of a woman. So very interesting. Brendan, I've got, if you guys are ever interested in doing this, I did this one, and I forget the exact number of years, but if you go from, basically history can kind of tell you secular history, not that they believe in a flood, but about the time of Noah. They pretty much got a, a date for that. If you track from Noah back to Adam, it's about I think it's 1,446 years. So if they know about when Noah's flood was, you can know when creation was. You can date it. You can date it. I've, I've done it with 
um, Adam begat, and it was so many years, and he was so many years old, and I worked backwards. So you add up all the years? Basically. Yeah. And it can tell you about when creation was. Oh, that's so that was really neat. Yeah, at least give you like a ball. Yeah, and it's in a different Bible, I think, but I had it in here. Oh, okay. Have it in there. Oh, that's super. Cool. That's is really neat. So tracking from Adam to Christ. I mean, so what? What? What's that importance? Being able to track all the way back. To Adam? Why is that? Why is that so? That Jesus is technically a son of Adam, like we all are. He couldn't be Satan without that. Right. Because he had to be God and man. Right. He had to be the combo. Right. And without that, we wouldn't have salvation. Right. This really establishes his humanity, right? And so, like you said, like sin was brought into the world by one man, and then had to be dealt with by another. So, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So, why is it other than, um, well, I think we'll go there for a second. So, why is um, why is it so important that we're able to track? Jesus's lineage from Abraham. Well, those God promised Abraham directly that it would come from. Yeah, so it's like he told Abraham, you know, from you, from your seed, you know, all all of the nations of the world will be blessed. And he and so, you know, it's not just talking about his world, it's talking about the entire world. The whole world's gonna because of your seed, you know, it's going to come to you. And it wasn't said just once. After that promise was made to Abraham, to God, when he met with uh, Isaac and Jacob, it was continuously, he continuously repeated that, you know, through you, through Abraham, all the nations of this world will be blessed. So God repeated it at least three times that I was able to find when I was studying. He continues to repeat that. And then why why is that? So what's key about that? So God fulfills his promises. Yes. Yeah. So keeps his word. So and Jesus says the promised one. And then how about with David? So what's key about that? This one's probably the You know, obviously, David is known to be the, 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 the lineage of Jesus Christ. So, like, um, one of the studies that we did some time ago with um, highlighted the, uh, the significance of David's line for the uh, coming of Jesus Christ. Right. So it established, you know, that it established Jesus' humanity, established that he's the promised one, he's the fulfillment of the promise, right? And then God also made a covenant with David, also, that because you have kept my word, but you have a heart like mine, you know, because of these things, um, you will never lack a person on the throne, right? So his descendants, that those may be um, perpetuated, you will never lack um, somebody on the throne. Was promised that God made. So being able to track from David to Christ, and not just on one side, not just from Joseph or Mary, but on both sides, the New Testament records it. You know, he's duly, you know, um, entitled to that title as king, right? So does mm -hmm. Israel, Israel's an established nation right now. Do they have a king on the throne? Do they have a king? They don't have a king. So even that is part of God keeping his promise. You know, what's holding them back from putting the king? been a nation for a long time now and you know, it's part of God keeping his promise. So there is a king over Israel right now and that's Jesus Christ. But they just haven't acknowledged that yet. So and that is, you know, he said you will have some your throne will endure forever. Right? That's that's what we're really looking forward to eternity. So very incredible. It's,
Does anybody else have any thoughts on it? Anything that really stuck out to them while they were studying it through seven years? Well, it's kind of the same thing. It's just when I read through it all, it's just it really shows, you know, uh, to be true to what he says, you know, that he knows every name, every person. It just makes you really, I don't know, just kind of makes you feel really secure in that. Because every name, every person matters, and he remembers every one of them. I think for me, it really reminds me of the people that, um, like, were in Jesus Christ, you know, lineage and stuff. Like, it's kind of amazing the people that God used because it wasn't like, you know, you know, all priests. <laughs> it was like some some people in there were like really messed up people <laughs> that he ended up using um, for that. And like I know Pastor has said this specifically, like to um, be like a woman noted in a um, in a genealogy. Um, genealogy, sorry, is like kind of a big deal because back then they were like, you basically like that's not even credible for it. But there's so many women that were noted in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And I don't know, it's just encouraging um, even nowadays because like just to share that with people and stuff. I don't know. That's always just something that's really um, kind of cool to me. It was a wonderful reassurance that the potter enjoys working with broken potter. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. A lot of broken pottery. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, God uses everything for his. Like, you look at Judah, you know, as a person um, who which the nation of Judah was named after, right? And you look at where his descendants came from. Like, it's just a story. It's a it's, you know, it's not it's not very good story, <laughs> you know. But like when Joseph, when his brothers came to Egypt. Right. And they were afraid that he was going to kill them because they found out who he was. And what did he tell them? You can evil the cause to make it good. Right, exactly. Right. So God, you know, even though things happen outside his moral will and what he expects of people and what he how he expects us to act and live, even though that happened outside his moral will, it never happened outside his sovereign will. What he always knew would happen. And he can use that to orchestrate all of his, um, all of his purposes. So, yeah. One thing that stood to me um, on pastors' like uh, questions, like on the application part, it was talking about. I think it was in chapter six, like or uh, chapter end of chapter five, like comparing was it the tribe of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh? Like it talks about how Gad had like basically cried out to God in battle and God gave them the victory and how they like honored him versus the half tribe of Manasseh. It says in verse 25, but they broke faith with God, with the God of their fathers and poured after the gods of the people of the land who God had destroyed before them. And so like it it offered in their place together, it offers a really sharp contrast. So he had like talked to like so this question was like, you know, why are those two there? But I, I think it was really interesting to see how, like I feel like so often we're saying, oh, well, how could Israel, well, okay, how about this? Israel, yes, was God's people, but man, so much time had passed that they had forgotten, but you can keep, I think, the memory of God and love of God alive if you work hard enough. You know, if you train your children enough, and obviously we're still human, we're still going to make mistakes, but you can pass on that knowledge. It's not an excuse to say, well, that was a really long time ago. No, you can say, hey, God is, you know, faithful. You can, um, you can trust him if you train up your children well enough. And we see so many examples of the opposite of that, but just how, um, you know, there's some people groups that were for the most part, pretty, pretty faithful, although they were still sinful that they, they still chose to, you know, follow God and stuff. Right. Yeah, for sure. That uh, reminds me of uh, Hezekiah, right? Hezekiah, he went and like he purged the nation of Israel of all the, uh, the high places and everything. Right? So he went through and did a lot of stuff. But then his son directly mm -hmm. after him was um, 
So he brought all the idolatry and stuff back. And it's like, it's immediate, you know. And then I believe Joash, Peter, uh, Josiah, Josiah, Covenant, and then directly after Josiah, they went right back into idolatry once again. So, yeah, it's crazy how just one generation and the very next generation. I mean, I don't know how old he was, but maybe he like pretended to be like a faithful follower, did all the stuff, but he sat around, but secretly he's like, when I'm king, I'm going to flip it back the other way. Right. Yeah. I think it happens even now, though, today. I mean, you see a lot of people who have, you know, like even pastors and stuff and their sons or daughters, like they completely go the opposite way. And I mean, who knows, like, I'm not one to judge why that happens in people's families, you know, but it's just like really emphasizing that personal relationship with Christ. It's not a religion, you know, it's not like works we do when we fall into that, you know, I want you to look this way, which is really easy when your parents, because <laughs> when Jackson's doing something bad, I'm like, we don't do that in church. <laughs> it's not how we act, but like, that's not what it's about. It's not about how we act. Is about this heart. Um, so. Yeah, you can't always judge the father for what his son does too. Mm -hmm. I went very wayward and had nothing to do with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> right? And he, he taught me and raised me as well. And then you look at Manasseh, also, he was 12 years old when he became king. So he was pretty young when mm -hmm. his dad died. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so we don't know if he defected immediately or if it was time after that. Um, Probably had a lot to do right with in it. his teenage years. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably had a lot to do with the people that were surrounding him when dad died. It was definitely so. with all of that, there's so much to everything that you know, has been said there, but you know, the biggest part of it is choice. You can have two people, one person who's raised converted in the church, like you're saying, and the next person's not, but their parents were still Christians, and one chooses to follow and the other one does not. It all boils back to that choice, but in many respects, that's hard, but that's also a blessing too, because that shows God's nature, just how great He is, that He will give you the choice no matter what. So you have that choice. That's His nature. You know, so he's not going to force you. So many people think God is a tyrant. He is not a tyrant. If He was a tyrant, He would force every person to believe in Him. He would force every person to worship Him. He doesn't do that. He gives you the choice, right. even though it hurts. Because he loves everyone so much, he'll even let you choose to reject him and curse him. So it really points to his nature in such an incredible way. What else? Mm -hmm. So one thing that these genealogies, so another title that Jesus carries, um, that these genealogies don't really point to too much, um, is and the fact that he's now the high priest. So before, when you know, they had to go to the priest, and the priest went to the high priest, but they went to, and then the high priest took everything to the Lord. So now that Jesus is the high priest, the New Testament says that we have one mediator between God and man, and that's the Lord Christ Jesus. So it's a uh, very interesting. I wasn't able to really find a you know, direct connection there. There was that promise made to Phineas. Um, Phineas was the priest who um, saw the Israelite guy walking in his tent with um, a, a pagan woman and went inside the tent and speared them both for him. <laughs> like he killed him. Out of zeal for the Lord because he was sick of the wickedness that was happening. Because of that, God. Thomas Phineas, you know, that you have a uh, perpetual priesthood so that his descendants and stuff would always be, um, you know, the priest and high priest. So um, that was a promise made to him. 
I want to talk to Pastor about it. I don't know if there's any correlation there. And from what I've read in different commentaries, I wasn't able to find anything that links Christ back to Phineas, per se. So I was going to talk to um, Pastor about that. I certainly would not be surprised if there was, well, I'm not saying that there was. Um, that's a, that was another thing that was interesting. It was chapter six, your gross religion genealogy of the priest. So if you guys want, we can kind of walk through some of the, uh, the passages that I went and wrote down that kind of walk through the promises that God made to um, Adam and Eve and to um, David or Abraham and David, and then some New Testament New Testament parallels also scripture that you know, links those things. If you want to look up Genesis 3.15. Other than you want to look up Genesis 12.3. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. 12.3, you said, right? Yep. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you are the curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Yeah, and the that promise is what is repeated a few other times throughout the book of Genesis. So, and then, Slav, if you want to look up 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. 2 Samuel 7? Yeah. Right, seven verses to what? Twelve through sixteen. Right, so seven, twelve through sixteen. And the verses that Daniel get on just read were the promises made directly to uh, Abraham. All right, second Samuel seven, twelve. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and I will set up, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. So he's making a promise to David. Directly addresses King Solomon, right? You know, the son's going after you. He's going to build a house for me, right? And he's going to establish his throne for his kingdom. And then he goes on to say, I'm going to establish your kingdom forever. And someone else. Right. Yeah. 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 And then, Nathan, would you mind looking up Acts? Or let's do Matthew 1, verse 1. And uh, David, would you mind looking up uh, the first part? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't write that one down. I was like, <laughs> yeah. so in the Acts 3, three verse the 25. Right. Acts 3, verse 25, yeah. Matthew 1 1 is the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Showing directly linking Jesus, David, and Abraham. And then the Luke passage I was thinking of, it said um, Jesus Christ, the son of um, the son of David, the son of Adam, who is the son of God. So linking Jesus, David, and We are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. 
so this is an ax, and so this is the Jews being addressed and reaffirmed that Christ is the fulfillment that prophesies from David. Tiffany, do you want to look up Galatians 3, 8? Galatians 3, 8. Uh, okay. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, And you shall all the nations be blessed. And this is Paul speaking to the Gentile church. So. Okay, would you mind reading John 19 19? Those verses are. Establishing Christ's humanity and him as the promised one. So these next verse will talk about Christ as King in the New Testament. It's in 1919. And Pilate wrote a title, put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. It's meant to be a mockery, but it's kind of ironic that he's. Victoria, would you mind looking up Revelation 17, 14? Seventeen fourteen. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with them are called with, with him are called and chosen and faithful. And Debbie, would you mind looking up first Timothy six fifteen? <laughs> Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Did I get that right? Six fifteen. Okay. That's like, like a, I think that was like a, it's like a, a, it wasn't even a medicinal thing. Mine says only sovereign. Oh, that's what I was going on. Give us the word where they get the word. Oh, really strong for people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they use that in, uh, they use potentate in the, uh, what was the Jerry Jenkins series? You know which one they're talking about? Left Behind, Left Behind series. Yeah. That's in that one. And would you mind looking up Hebrews versus, or Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17? Mm -hmm. And then Diana, or Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Hebrews 2, 17. Mm -hmm. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be like unto his brethren, that he may be merciful and faithful, high priest in heaven, pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So he's saying all things like his brethren, right? So he can be he was he was just like us, and he lived a life like us. He was tempted in all ways like us, so without sin. So and then uh Hebrews chapter three, verse one. Yep. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly call, calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Jesus the high priest. So, even though Christ was, so a lot of people will take this uh, passage from Philippians also, where it talks about, you know, Jesus, you know, he emptied himself and came to earth. Right? So, they take that to mean that he emptied himself for being God. You know, being human at all. And uh, that's not true. He's God in the flesh, right? So he's holy God and holy man. So, um, and you remind me of Colossians 2 9. And this is a stance that, uh, of, uh, who is Jones Witnesses. It is important to note that 
gives us all that. For in him dwells all fullness of the Godhead bodily. Daniel, you other Dan, would you mind looking up uh, for a second? Will you want mind looking up Hebrews chapter two, verses fourteen to eighteen? For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, we also himself likewise depart of the same. But through death we might destroy him and have the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, is able to succor them that are tempted. Anybody have any questions on any of those things that we just went through? Pastor's going. Do you know? I'm sure he's planned it that way. Oh, here's the yeah. 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 But there's more genealogy. No, Genealogy created the version of your own No, I've actually it. Chapter, 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 chapter. It helped that we had already been going through all the previous chapters and kind of started to recognize the names. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Great, right. so, like, oh, I know that. Great, right. for sure. I don't think that name was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I do, but I'm gone for some of the girls, some of the girls I've gone for about three weeks in a row. So if somebody needs to bring if you more guys want something. We're going to according to my mom and dad's for two, and then we get back on a Friday, and we're leaving from the airport to drive to Kansas City for the weekend for Tony's uncle's funeral. Mm -hmm. So, two weeks from now. So, we're going to see you in April then. Yeah. When is Easter? So, so okay, I'll be here for Easter. That'll be here for Easter. Right? All right. Well, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day giving us, Lord, that we get to be together with other believers in your house. Thank you for your word, Lord, even though we joke about um, the origins of going through the genealogies, why they're so important, Lord, how you were nailing down, setting in stone Christ's right to the throne, among other things, showing us that Christ was, in fact, a man, he came as a man live like one of us. Thank you so much for the salvation that you've given us through Jesus Christ and his amazing sacrifice and your amazing love for us. Lord, we pray for the services today that they would go well and just bless our fellowship. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.